Welcome to ChessStrategiesBlog.com. Today we're going to look at some chess endgame strategy, specifically the square of the pawn. Hope you enjoy it. Today I wanted to do a little video about uh, chess endgames, and we'll start with uh, just simple king and pawn endgames. Here we have a position where it's black to move, and this pawn here at a4 is obviously going to try to get to a8 to promote to a queen and this king wants to try to catch it. The problem is that the king is behind the pawn and as long as white keeps moving the pawn the king can never catch it. It's impossible, inconceivable that the king could catch that pawn. And yet and the reason for that is that uh, the pawn moves one space and the king moves one space. If the pawn is ahead of the king, the king can never catch it. And yet I've seen players time and again think that, well, maybe uh, my king will run a little faster somehow. Somehow something will happen that I'll be able to catch that pawn. Well, you, you can't catch the pawn. How can you tell whether you can catch the pawn? There's a simple rule, and I'll show it to you right now. It's called the square of the pawn. I'm going to show you the concept called the square of the pawn. And this is a rule for deciding whether or not you can catch the pawn. So here we have a pawn. White has a pawn at a4. And the black king is at f3. And black wants it's black's move, and black wants to decide whether he should resign or whether he should uh, go ahead and chase that pawn. And the way to tell is by drawing a square. If you start with the pawn at a corner and make a diagonal down to the last row and treat that as the opposite diagonal corner and visualize the square that is formed by the, the, that diagonal. So here the diagonal starts at A4 ends at e8, the other corner would be e4, and a8. If you can visualize that square, and visualization, the ability to see in your mind, is very important in chess, and you should work at developing that. And so try to visualize, actually see that square. If the king can move into the square, then he can catch the pawn. So in this case, the move, the only move that allows black to catch that pawn is to move from f3 to e4. And watch how black keeps up with the pawn and catches it just as it turns to a queen. And it's a draw. Now suppose that it were white's move. In that case, white moves his pawn to a5, and now the square has gotten smaller, you see. It is only four squares by four squares, and the king can't move into the square of the pawn. Check, and it'll be checkmate in a few moves. So that's a simple rule for deciding whether or not your king can catch the pawn, and this is useful in visualizing several moves ahead. If you can see a position coming where your king will be outside of the square of the pawn, you may want to take that into consideration in uh, making your plans, and uh, vice versa. There is one thing you should keep in mind, and that is what happens if the pawn is still on its original square. And let's take a brief look at that. So let's take this case, and the pawn is at a2, and you see the square of the pawn would go from a2 to g8 and here to g2 and up to a8. a2 to a8, g8 to g2. That would be the square. But the problem is that the pawn can make a two-step move on its first move. Black, seeing the square of the pawn ending at g8, thinks, well, I can get into the square of the pawn just by moving to g8. But white makes the two-step move, and now the square has contracted by, by uh, two squares and black can't get into it. So that's all I've got for today on the square of the pawn. I hope you learned something from it. See you next time.
If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube videos, give the video a rating, and visit my chess blog, chessstrategiesblog.com. See you next time.